Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and in today's video we are going to talk about a book that is Siddhartha by Hermann Hess. This book was published in 1922 and in here we have a protagonist that gives the name of the book Siddhartha. So he is a young man and this passes in India in the 6th century before Christ and Siddhartha is an intelligent, promising young man interesting in learning more and more. He is son of um, Brahmin and that in uh, the social organization in India is at the top of, this, of the hierarchy in social divisions. So he had a comfortable life and he dedicated his life to learning. And this young man is so promising that it is expected that he will earn the respect of his father in that community. But one thing that characterizes Siddhartha is his insatisfaction. So he's um, a bit frustrated because he is in search of enlightenment, of inner peace, to be empty. Empty of thirst, empty of desire, of dreams, of joy, of sadness. When the totality of the self is dominated and death, when all addictions and inclinations disappear, then the deepest part of the being will awaken that, that which is no longer the self, the great secret. So this is a free translation that I did. I read this book in Portuguese, so forgive me if the translation is not totally correct. But so he was in search of it, of distancing himself from the self. And he realizes that the Brahmins that he knows, including his father, are not enlightened. enlightened. So he will not have answers to the questions that afflicted him with them. And so he decides to leave his home, to leave his position and follow a different path, his own path. He asks permission to, of it, to his father um, to leave the house, to leave his home and to go on a journey. But his father refuses. He doesn't, well, he's not keen with the idea. So Siddhartha stays in the exact place where he asked, where he did the question to his father. So his father is going to sleep and Siddhartha stays exactly in the place where he asked the question. And he doesn't move, he, he doesn't fall asleep, he doesn't eat, he doesn't drink, he doesn't do anything until he has a um, positive response from his father. And so his father, seeing the resolution and the persistence of his son, of Siddhartha, he eventually gives a yes and gives permission to Siddhartha to leave home. And they will guide them towards meditation, fasting, holding their breath, being insensitive to pain. They are very disciplined and they are very thin because they starve, because they do fasting. And so they will learn uh, with this community, they will learn to do that and they will be with them for three years. But Siddhartha remains insatisfied. He considers that all these teachings are temporary suspension of the self and that he could have learned all that from ordinary people. But as I've said, they remain with the Samanas for three years until it comes a day where, well, there was rounding a rumor, like a legend, of someone named Gotama, Gotama the Sublime, the Buddha, and he travels around the country teaching his 
doctrine and he is always surrounded by young people without possessions, without a home, without a wife. But the funny thing is Gotama or Buddha is an enlightened man. So Siddhartha admires him very much and they contact with Buddha and, and Siddhartha has a chance to talk to him. And Siddhartha wants to achieve the enlightenment that Buddha achieved. So he wants to be like Buddha. But still, he doesn't follow Buddha. Because he considers that it was not from doctrines that Buddha found enlightenment. Siddhartha looks for the moment when this will happen. And so he continues his pilgrimage. So he says in a conversation that he has with Buddha that he admires his doctrines, that he thinks that his doctrines are the best that ever could be, but that isn't enough for him because he's searching to be separated from the self, to be dispossessed of everything from, he, from the self. So he wants to be like Buddha, but he understands that it's not because he follows the doctrines of Buddha that he will become enlight enlightened. So that's why he doesn't follow Buddha. And it's here that Govinda and Siddhartha separate because Govinda stays with Buddha and follows him. And Siddhartha also realizes that it it is alone that the quest for enlightenment will be possible. So he understands that he has to do the rest of the journey alone. He comes to the conclusion that the masters cannot teach how to reach enlightenment. They can teach how to live a, a righteous and orderly life, but not how to attain enlightenment. Wisdom comes from within not from teachings. So Siddhartha will just continue on his journey and will experience a life of wealth where he will remain for many years. So he, he will have a detour in his objective. He will deviate from its course. But there comes a time when he gives up everything once more and sets out in a journey again. And there is where he will meet the boatman who will become his, greater, his greatest master. He is a very simple man with, very, with a very simple perspective uh, upon life. But he, it will be with him that Siddhartha will achieve some peace of mind and will come to his better resolutions about life. So he, Siddhartha will contact with different people here. I, I'm not inclined to say more about the plot because I think if I say more, yeah, I will give too much and I will subtract the fun of your reading. So I think I'm going to stay here about the plot, but you have to know that Siddhartha will contact with very different people and he will learn something from every single person, different things. So he will live a full life because he will experience almost everything that you can experience in life. So he'll, he, will, he will live a very enriched life in experiences, I mean. He will regret some things and he will go into a more depressive state where he will come across a thought that everything that he was doing was far from what he got himself to do at the beginning. So he was lost. So he's a journey of achieved peace of mind with many detours in a way, with many um, teachings with other people. So the experience that you have in exchanging, in communicating, 
in experience with other people and I have to say that I really enjoy this book I love the conversations between characters so I can say that Govinda and Siddhartha will meet again further in the story uh, and they will be in very different positions in life and every single person with with whom Siddhartha contact, he has a way to extract the best of them, in a way, the best teachings that they can give. Because Siddhartha is very seductive, in a way, you know, because he's very intelligent, very, well, very sure of himself and or he thought he was, but he has a way to go through and confront the situations of his life in a way that demonstrates strength and honesty. He's very honest with his feelings. So I love this book, I love the writing, I think it's very beautiful. I heard some comments that maybe people thought it was a bit mellow. I didn't thought that at all. I thought it was in a right dose. So you have here a really poetic writing in a way with moral of the stories in every chapter but I think you can extract something from here to your own life you can make parallels between the life of Siddhartha and his choices with your own life and your own choices that you do every day and so I think this is a a journey that you do together with the character and you can think and reflect on the thoughts of Siddhartha and the situations that he gets into so you can reflect on that and think well perhaps he shouldn't have done that or what would I do in that situation you can put yourself in Siddhartha's shoes, you know, so it's really interesting because this book in that particular way is very interactive, not that he talks to you but you can put yourself in his shoes and think what you, ha you have done if you were him or if you were in that particular situation and yeah I really enjoyed this book, I really advise you to pick it up is not as you can see is really thin so it's a really quick read and you will be very inter entertained um, the the reading will flow very well so I think you will love this one and yeah I think that's it so please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already don't forget to press the ring bell button to wall so you can receive all my notifications. Leave a like, it helps out the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And yeah, I think that's it. I see you on the next one. Bye!